Hello, this is Ralph Turciano. It is the 18th of April, 2016, and I'm here to review with you, informally at least, the top three health headlines of the past seven days. Starting off with number one, breakthrough may stop multiple sclerosis in its tracks. What researchers discovered was this plant compound from traditional medicine called Oldenlandia affinis. I hope I got the pronunciation down correctly. What they discovered is this plant was shown to stop the progression of normal clinical symptoms of MS in animal models so far. So it looks very promising, but they have to carry out the study to humans, which has not been done yet. Number two, antihistamines affect exercise recovery, may or may not be a problem. The reason the researchers look a little, uh, had that ambiguous title, so to say, is because they looked at 3,000 genes, which they know were involved in exercise recovery. What they discovered was that antihistamines block or alter 795 of those 3,000 genes. What that means, they don't quite know, but it's important because they're worried in regard to uh, athletes, people that are training real difficult and have to adapt to certain stressors, that it may actually block the ability to improve with exercise, as stated. Histamine, a substance that we typically think of negatively and is most often associated with seasonal allergies, is an important substance contributing to the normal day-to-day -day response to exercise in humans. Now, as they concluded, whether the antihistamine effect on 795 affected genes may suggest a problem for competitive athletes and devoted exercises is not yet known. But it looks like you should avoid it. Try and avoid it if possible. Number three. Physicians' knowledge about FDA approval standards for breakthrough therapy. Now, to be fair, this research was done by the Journal of American Medical Association. And when you think of the word breakthrough drug, I am just as guilty as anybody else thinking if something says breakthrough, there must be something that's breakthrough about it. However, that is not the case in regard to how the FDA approves drugs. This is how doctors responded to the survey, which also thought breakthrough meant breakthrough. 73% incorrectly, incorrectly believe FDA approval meant comparable effectiveness to other approved drugs? No. 70% incorrectly believed approval required both a statistically significant and clinically important effect? Obviously not. Among the three breakthrough uh, knowledge questions, 52% incorrectly believe that strong evidence is required to get a breakthrough designation? Obviously not. Number five, so to say, number four, 90% chose one hypothetical drug over another identical one solely based on the breakthrough designation. Even though the old drug and the breakthrough drug are exactly the same, they assume in order for something to be designated as breakthrough, something must be incredible about it. But that's according to the FDA. And the FDA just likes putting the word breakthrough on things which obviously are not a breakthrough in any regard whatsoever. So to take from this, all because something sounds and has a good title as breakthrough, it really means not much. Doctors fell for it, as well as the general public as well. Those are the top three health headlines of the past seven days. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Catch you then. Bye.